everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Here we go with the incredible, phenomenal, amazing Vanessa Marshall. All of the above. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the audition process here. Now, obviously you do commercials, you do promos, you do video games, you do all this crazy stuff, mm -hmm. but you audition from home, yeah? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so when an audition comes in, mm -hmm. whether it's for a commercial, promo, whatever, mm -hmm. um, how do you break it down and how do you know when you that you've delivered a good audition? That's interesting. It's changed over the years. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I took a class with Maurice Tobias. I'm not sure if you've... Everybody uh, knows so, Maurice Tobias. Yeah, well, I mean, if you <laughs> studied with her, but she has a very specific method that is so helpful for breaking copy down yeah. and taking each word one at a time and discovering why that word and not any other. And uh, when I used to, when I was sort of more new to analyzing copy, I would use her method. And I, I don't want to say what it is. You should call her. She'll teach you. Um, it's she owns it. Very good. But that process really helped me to not only understand what the ad agency is up against and their mm -hmm. creative process, mm -hmm. it helped me to understand how to help them get it done more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I usually research the brand. Uh, I Google it. Thank God for Google. Right. Um, sometimes right. I'll even look up the stock market and I'll see where the stocks are at in competitive. I, I try to understand exactly what is driving their rebranding, mm -hmm. who they're going after, who they currently have. And again, it's this anthropology thing where sure. I, I, I'm fascinated by this stuff. But it does help to understand what the bean counters are looking for and then what we don't even want to hear as consumers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do we get, you know, make them happy with their selling points, so on and so forth. So I do that kind of meditation on it. Then I just go in the booth and I'll do maybe three in a row. And I'll come out of the booth and listen to it. And I, either I'll cobble something together or I'll listen and I'll go, that's completely wrong. Go back in and redo it. Now, other times, you have five seconds to put something on a file and all of what I've just described, out the window. You look at it in the booth for the first time going, hey man, not announcer, man, hey man, uh, Catherine Hepburn, uh, man. okay, got it, let's go. You have, I don't know what yeah. the hell, and, and you just throw it at the wall and send it out and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes the time crunch is such that you really can't like have this philosophical yeah. meditation yeah. with right. the stock market, you know, <laughs> really dude, get, just get over yourself. So um, uh, time, if that's a factor, I just really wing it and hope that it's in the ballpark and let it go. And I let mean, it go. there's yeah. a lot of voiceover copy, so if you don't get this one, maybe the next one you'll have more time or, mm -hmm. Um, if I have time, sometimes I think too much about it, and it's better to just rattle it off yeah. and let it go. Um, but I do mostly from home. Uh, I love going to VoiceCaster. I love going to Kalmanson. I love going to outside auditions. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't it doesn't happen as often. Elaine Craig is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I've taken classes with Elaine Craig. She's amazing. Jeff Howell is mm -hmm. also wonderful for promos. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's usually Fast and Furious these days. Yeah. But if I do get copy that is impregnable, I, I, I go back to Maurice's method and it always helps. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you have to tell the story of how you got Mary Jane Watson. Yes. Oh, that's I heard a little bit about that. Spider Man. You guys yeah. are in for a treat. One of your mo I mean, you, you read the blogs and the chat rooms. I mean, Mary Jane on Spectacular Spider Man, they love her. But the story of how you got it, I just think is genius. It, it was pretty funny. <laughs> well, first of all, when, when they sent me the copy, I was going to pass on it. Because uh, now, at this point, I think I had been in animation for 10 years. And mm -hmm. they're, the, they're the women who work all the time. And they're, I don't want to say they're the royalty, but you know they're going to get, I mean, and, and, I, and my agent called and said, why didn't you send this in? And I said, I'm never going to get Mary Jane Watson. What are you, nuts? She said, just try so I laid it down. I got a call back. Mm. I couldn't believe it. And I went in and they said, do you want us to play your audition so you know where? And I said, yeah, sure, go ahead. And I heard, <laughs> Vanessa, what did I say? The giggle at the top was what they loved. <laughs> Vanessa Marshall is Mary Jane. And then they stopped it. And I said, can I hear the audition? And they said, no, actually, um, your slate was Mary Jane. The rest of it sucked. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that I, I didn't that. recreate it for you the first time. I, I, I muffled my own slate. I do know who I am. 
Um, mm. But I've never, because there are differing views. Sometimes if you slayed in character, mm -hmm. they hate it. Yes. I didn't know that at certain houses they do, and the, I wasn't booking over there, and, and now I know why. Because I took classes with them to learn mm -hmm. what they want. They hate that. So I stopped they doing it. They hate when you slate in yeah. character? Yes. Yeah, no, it's important to know oh, who because you there need are to know some who that don't Because like they it. go, oh, God, you know, I can't work with her. What, is she nuts? Yeah. You know, they want to know your bass voice. And then, whether do I want to have her in the room with me? All right, she sounds like she's not that bad. You know, or that means more to them. And since I started doing that for them, now I'm working for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Classes help us learn yes. more. Yeah. Yes. But, um... But for that role, I got the part with my slate. What? Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Were you that. like, did you freak out like when they said that? I, I would I was, freak well, out. Well, I was in the middle of a Honda job. I yeah. was doing legal tags at Lisa. La, 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 at the end, yeah. that was, I love doing legal tags. I know. It's so awesome. I pretend this is a great legal tag trick. Ready? Um, not like, okay, you need to do it in four seconds. It's like, okay, it's a 10 second thing you need it in four. No problem. You pretend that your listener is leaving the room so you're going to talk faster because you want to get your point across. If you, if you put an intention behind it every single time, I don't know why, but to the second, like, well, no, we need 6.3, it always works every time. So I don't know, that might not work for you, but if you're under pressure, I'm just saying there's a gift. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Moving so on. we have Salmon leaving the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got, exactly. She's um, full of tips. But, but my agent called, and they were uh, editing some stuff. We were on a break, and I answered the phone, and I heard, is this Mary Jane Watson? <gasps> What? What? Are you, what? And then she's like, "You got Mary Jane Watson." <gasps> Bam! I hit the floor. I absolutely. Oh, dude! I fell to my knees. I was hyperventilating. I well, uh, well, what? That's a that's a major coup. I yeah. mean, because uh, up to that, I was like paramedic one, mm -hmm. charcoal lipstick lady number two. Yeah. Ooh, that got or, me a little yeah. teary. I yeah. got a little teary from that. Yeah. Thanks. No, I really. I I cute. lost my mind, and the Honda people were like, "Are you okay? What just happened?" And, you know, no, baby, I'm fine. Um, so I pulled it together and finished the gig. But um, wow, that was, it's just so funny. You know, you think you can't do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. Yeah. That was and, yours to and, get. Yeah, Clearly, but, that was but, yours. I don't know. Yeah, but weird. isn't it also amazing that you, going into it, when you were auditioning, you're like, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I'm not going to mm. get this. Somebody no, really. else. And it, well, you threw yeah. it so far out there that you didn't want it, <laughs> or that you couldn't they, get yeah. it, that you got it. Yeah. I think that was Murphy teaching you a lesson. Yeah. I, I, but it's, sometimes it's good to know your place. Yeah. I wasn't necessarily trying to be negative. Mm. I was really just like, that's just silly. Submit the people who really might get it. Yeah. Don't. You don't need yeah. to do. Don't do twelve. Do five. Really, ace. I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I'm. I'm glad that I followed her advice and did it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm sorry that I didn't recreate it perfectly for you. It was good <laughs> but, enough. But you get the rough idea. There was yeah. like a giggle at the end. It wasn't it about the voice. It was about the yeah. story. Mm. In the slate, exactly. <gasps> yeah. Have you gotten any advice along the way that's helped you in your career? Do you think? Hmm. Pat Fraley has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. He's a great teacher. And he really is. Ironically, he has me back to speak at his classes. And I'm like, Pat, why? Because I take his classes. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of tricks uh, for dialects. Mm -hmm. He says, all right, you're, you're nervous about the Russian? OK, listen, she lived in Jersey for a time. So she, it's, it's not the most perfect Russian accent because she's lived elsewhere. Let it go. And then, then you take the pressure off, and then that sort of imperfect Russian accent is actually mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As opposed to trying to, you know, roll your eyes, you know, hello, lady. Um, she's just, she's been in Jersey. Let it, let yeah. it go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and, uh, and Maurice Tobias, uh, again, with the stuff that she taught about what the ad agency is mm -hmm. up against, that it gives you a good framework to, to sort of not take things personally. Mm -hmm. Because there's a conversation at the level that Coca-Cola is having, for example. Then there's the agencies that had to audition to get said account. Mm -hmm. Then these ones that were trying to keep that account. Mm -hmm. uh, what they're trying, they're trying to sort of reinvent the wheel. And, it, you know, she, she really taught us how to understand that, that it, it's an exercise in being helpful to all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They want to make money. They want to win Cleos. And you need to, to not them. have an attitude right? Yeah, you need and to be on them. time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, 
And so uh, having Maurice break it down, but other teachers have done that as well. Jody Gottlieb is wonderful mm -hmm. because she works as a producer and um, she has uh, experience that she brings firsthand and what's current. And it's I love taking classes yeah, with her now you. because yeah. she really, her timing class is amazing. Oh, it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, um, just to stay nimble, limber, and, and understand what they want to hear because as a culture, we shift. Mm -hmm. um, when 9-11 uh, happened, all commercial reads changed, mm. all yeah. of them. Yeah. You couldn't be smug, you were a jerk. Yeah. You had to really come from a, a sincere place. No longer could you do the wry thing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Not, not cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so paying attention to not only what is going on with Americans or wherever the heck your thing is playing, um, uh, Jody, Jeff Howell, a lot of teachers sort of help you stay in the loop on that. They're like. No, we're not doing that anymore. Or, yeah. or, you know, we're we're going back to the announcer because mm -hmm. the culture is afraid. They want to hear a father figure tell them if you buy this car, everything's going to be okay. So they want stability, and yeah. that's sort of more announcery. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and now everything is non-announcer, but you right. still have to sell things. Yeah, so, it has yeah. to pop. It has mm, to punch. Yeah. It's yeah. such a and, fine and, line. And I have to say that the announcer is not fully dead. No. Because you hear no. the, you hear the announcer true. all and the time. A lot of the dramas. Yeah. 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 So, oh, I know. But, it's just but like, it's a yeah. friendly announcer. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really like NBC right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's Reno Romano. There are a bunch yeah. of people. Yeah. Uh, they really managed to... Yeah. Make it sort of a friendly mm -hmm. announcer in in such a um, yeah. In a, it's not affected. It's it's really effective. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I love the sound of NBC. Yeah, it's I love great. that. I also love yeah. what ABC's doing with their promos now because yeah. they're really hitting them. Yeah, fine. they're wacky. You know I mean? you they're like, like the three, two, it's one. It's like you can't yeah. be in the yeah. kitchen and hear our ABC <laughs> promo now, <laughs> yeah. uh, and and not like go like, what the heck is that? Yeah, yeah. totally. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, I'm noticing that a lot more. Um, yeah, that things are written in a more conversational fashion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Fox promos also. You know, have you seen this thing? Well, you should because I'm just look. I don't care what you watch, but uh, what the heck? We yeah. that you never thought that would yeah, happen. No, yeah, and no, here we are. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. working overtime to try and yeah. get people's attention, man. And, right. You know, yeah. forget about that popcorn and that cookie. Stay here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I'll leave. Yeah, really, really cool, man. Um, if you were starting your career all over today, mm -hmm. okay. And this is for them out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people out there that are starting their career and, mm -hmm. and they're in the trenches and some mm -hmm. of them are, are you know, doing really well. Some of them are not doing so well. What advice do you think you, you, you what would you do today if you were starting your, your voice or career today? I wouldn't do anything differently. Um, I, I recommend classes, classes, classes. And what comes with taking classes is the humility mm -hmm. and the courage to fail. Mm -hmm the willingness to take risks and try, and um, that it's, it's a process and there's no destination. So um, I, I took many, many classes, as I said, I still do, and I would say go for that. I would say on a personal level, uh, I would do just as much uh, self-investigatory work as I did writing journaling. I took many writing classes. Mm -hmm. um, I started doing essay shows, not like essay shows, but essay. <laughs> there, you know, there's a premise, um, uh, you know, lust and love, tales of mm -hmm. lust and love. And I did that and they actually published one of them in a book. Um, I find that writing actually helps one have more confidence at the microphone mm -hmm. because while you might not fit the product, you'll have a point of view. Yes. And you, yes. you get that from either stand-up comedy or, or essay writing or short novels or, or things that are more sort of memoir, I guess. But um, mm -hmm. so I, I think there's the <clears throat> sort of scholastic aspect. There's um, the inner landscape aspect. And uh, I will say this, you may get on a roll and then something weird happens where all of a sudden like four things go away. What? And there it creates a funk. Now, let me tell you something. Don't go towards the funk. Take more classes, keep it moving, focus on what's right. Who cares about that? Yeah. Because what I've seen over and over again is people be on a roll, 
they're doing really well, and then something weird happens. Now, here's the thing. We are dealing with circumstances that are far beyond our control. Far. Mm, we're absolutely. not mind readers. It's, it's totally random. Everyone I know is equally talented, and I mean that. And why I got it over someone else, I have no idea half the time. Really, honestly, I don't know what, how that is. But if it suddenly shifts somewhere that feels like the end of the world, yeah. it isn't. It's just in this moment where the culture shifted and we just need to, we need to go, go back in the classroom and, and get in line with what's up right now because it is changing every minute. It just changed. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, I've seen many of my friends sabotage themselves by overthinking, well, should I, maybe if I do it in a unitard, no, dude, just <laughs> relax. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they've ruined, I mean, they, they, they're done. And it just happens with like sort of a mini nervous breakdown when they take things personally. So whatever that four agreements is, do not take any of it personally. Yeah. I think that's why I adopt this scientist sort of scientific attitude where I'm, I find it interesting. If they don't hire me, okay. I threw linguine at the wall next time. Yeah, do the Rotelli. Very good. It's not it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, it's a really healthy attitude. And and also I check myself. Okay, Vanessa, are you lying to yourself right now? Are you actually in some sort of shame spiral or it, am I mad at someone? Sometimes that stank that that comes to the microphone. Mm. Yeah. Because, you know, oh, I'm fine. No, oh, I'm not going to say anything. How important is it? <laughs> How, oh, I just, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's, and then, no, you know what, dude? It's not fine. So <laughs> there, there are times yeah. when we need to sort of clean house, yeah. get current with people in our lives, and uh, that's, a, that's just a very uh, a private journey that, that only one mm -hmm. can ask. If it really is bothering you, if anything, go love yourself. Go on a retreat and fall in love with yourself because that you bring that love back to the mic, you're going to book, it's... It's it's not a problem. So mm, that's um, awesome. I would Get do down more I more self love. love that, that's what that. I would do. Self love. Wow, isn't it amazing? It's it's been about love here the last few weeks. Yeah, <laughs> it's sh well we yeah should be about love all the time. I, that's true. Yeah. That's true. We're trying to change the world. And there you go. Love. Exactly. Um, <laughs> one mic at a time. <laughs> one mic at a time. <laughs> one word at a time. Um, let's talk a little Star Wars. <laughs> okay. Star Wars Rebels, um, it, it's all over. People love it. You work with the fabulous Steve Bloom. Who I love, love Steve. Yeah. And you're doing a lot of the Star Wars conventions and fan conventions. What do you love about doing them? Why do you do them? What's kind of your takeaway from your side of it? Uh, well, I've said in other Star Wars interviews that uh, I've always been a Star Wars fan. I saw the first mm -hmm. film, and um, as a storyteller, as yeah. I said, it, it is a, an amazing story. And I obviously has mythic elements, so the story has been told before, mm -hmm. you know, right. the, the hero's journey and all that. Um, but I have been kind of a loner with it. In other words, I've had action figures and this and that, but I didn't avail myself to social media, mm -hmm. a celebration, all these things. I, I live in a shoe. I mean, I, I edit all day long and I love Star Wars. Well, so suddenly <laughs> when I got the copy, I thought it was Star Wars. And I actually called my friend and said, dude, Anyway, I feel Star Wars. And he's like, you feel Star Wars at the supermarket <laughs> when some dude's behind you going, <laughs> you know, everything's Star Wars. Like, shut up. Just read it. it, it you know, they said it was about wolves. Yeah. Mm. So I was like, all right, fine. But I said, you know what? I'm going to pretend it is Star Wars. And I'm that right? girl. And, and it worked. And uh, I think substituting Star Wars instead of wolves uh, helped. And when I got the call back, I saw the picture of the character who's a Twi'lek, and I, I know that race is obviously, you know, Jabba the Hutt employed several Twi'leks dancing for him now and again. Right. And I looked at uh, the booth and I saw Dave Filoni, and I swallowed hard because I'm a huge fan of the Clone Wars, and and I, I was happy with the callback, dude. I was like, yeah. oh my God, a callback. Yeah. And I thought, oh, well, that happened. <laughs> and there's no way. And then I got that. Now, the heart attack for Mary Jane was, um, only one percent of mm. the the paramedic team that probably was needed <laughs> when, when I got, got that Hera. call. Because <laughs> honestly, I just kept, I started crying. I hyperventilated. And of course, I was home. I wasn't in a session, so maybe okay, I would have done that with That's, Mary Jane yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I just kept saying, "Why? How did I get so lucky? Why? Oh my God! You know, no way!" And I, once I calmed down, uh, 
she gave me more of the details, and I, I was so thrilled. And um, then, I, I, you know, they, I had to take a Twitter class, okay? Mm. Because I'm like, what is this with a bird? What? You're tweeting? Oh, God. 160 characters? Oh, God, please. I have to count my letters now? What is this garbage? <laughs> Ay, narcissism. Yeah. Uh, you know, and... Um, Anthropology would take all your oh. characters right out the bat, so you got Oh, well, and, but, then I, and then I, but then what I love about Twitter is a spirit of generosity that exists. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are people who trawl and look to yeah. sort of, you yeah. know, there. Uh, yeah. hate and hate, and the haters are going to hate, talk to Tay-Tay. Right. But um, there, there are also, it's shake it off, people. Mm. There are people who will volley each other up, and yeah. that I loved. So I loved getting on Twitter and saying, check out my friend's new commercial. You know, check this out. Oh, look at this great macaroni, or I, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> and so I started having fun in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Star Wars thing came along, and then uh, I started getting uh, tweets from people and understanding this whole culture. culture. Yeah. yeah. And suddenly I wasn't such a loner. It was like a coming out party mm -hmm. for me. I, I found my people. Yeah. And it was sublime. It yeah. really was, to use that word again. Yeah. Um, I went down to Star Wars weekends. I met Peter Mayhew, uh, Chewbacca. And the weird thing is, when you see that dude, it, it, obviously he's not he Chewbacca. Like he's, he's not here. Right? <laughs> yeah, but when you look in his eyes, you see Chewie. Yeah. It's Chewie, dude. Wow. And I was like, you know, and I, I tried to act normal, <laughs> but I was freaking out. And it was his 70th birthday, and they did an interview show with James Arnold Taylor, mm -hmm. and um, Ahmed Best is there. Um, he plays Jar Jar. That guy is amazing. He really invented all that technology, yeah. uh, what yeah. they did with Jar is really quite amazing. And um, they bring out the Millennium Falcon cake. We're singing Happy 70th Birthday to wow. Chewie. Wow. Oh, and, man. Uh, yeah, That's and, a and, moment. And, and Jedi Mickey is handing me Mickey Mouse ears. And when I got through that, I went in the bathroom, and I looked at myself in the mirror, and I literally had no explanation as to how this was my life. Like, I really was looking, you know those moments where you go, yep. yeah, who am I? Really? Yeah. This yeah. is weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in, in, a, in a wonderful way. And the only thing I can do is sort of avail myself, uh, and if anything, she's such a strong female character, mm -hmm. to show younger women that you know, it's not about her being a woman even. It's about her being a good character. She's a good person. Mm -hmm. And she's not she's not doing any she she's not necessarily being a mother because yeah. she's a badass, you know, the Madonna horror complex. Right. She's right. she well, she's smart and capable. She and, she's a strategist yeah. and she's no BS and she's very compassionate and caring mm -hmm. and she has her heart in the right place and that's where she's coming from. Yeah. So um if anything I think well maybe that's why I'm meant to do this is because that's really what I want to help women do is find their voice. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's well, what Well, I was I'd... reading so much in the different chat rooms and stuff, and, and I think what really resonates with your fans is that it's so authentic for you. You really champion for her, and you're so oh, yeah. excited to be in this whole realm that I'm I think that people completely <laughs> connect with that. You are cool. Because you're not you're acting. You're cool You're no, not acting I'm like, still... oh, I love this. You really do, and you get as jazzed about it. So yeah. I think that that's always... I think people yeah. always love that. They feel even more connected to it. And that's you. the thing. You know, you're always going to have your haters. There are people that are going yeah. to project things onto you that yeah. aren't true. Or um, I think that I, I was saying earlier that I really prefer the invisibility of voiceover. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Star Wars has done has put me way more in the limelight, like Entertainment Weekly, these press junkets, things yeah. that like, I used to go to Comic-Con to get comic books. Then I would go as Irwin from Grim Adventures of Billy right. and Mandy and do panels and still hang out and buy comic right. books. Then I did Wonder Woman. Then I did Black Canary. And then I did Star Wars. What? Um, it was it was a, a whole other Ooh. level of visibility that, yeah. that I'm a fan first, so that's a little jarring. Um, you know, yeah. like people ask, what is your reaction to the fans? They're not really my fans, they're my friends. Yeah. And, and you feel and, like you're one of them. Well, and, and not, not in a naive way, mm -hmm. uh, which is to say, like, they're, they're, people are bananas all over the place. You can't just be friends with everybody. Right. You have to, yeah, you know, yeah, dude, yeah, boundaries, yeah, you, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, but, um, but what I was going to say is that people will hate, but if you're coming from a loving place once again, um, the love of the saga, the people who are in, in that zone, we all get along great. Even yeah. if you're Sith, we get along. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the dark side, it's fine. You know, you're, you'll come around. But uh, <laughs> we have pizza, just saying. Yeah. Um, so 
uh, that that has been wonderful to just have a whole new group of friends mm -hmm. and I cherish them. Yeah. It, it's so much fun. Yeah. It's almost like having my childhood all over again. Yeah. Well, That's if you so guys cool. aren't following, it's at Van Marshall on Twitter. So Yay. follow her and <laughs> yeah. Yay. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Get down. Um, you're really passionate about giving back and mm -hmm. you said earlier about helping women find their voice and so you're doing some yes, work well, there there's, now. Yeah, there's a wonderful organization um, called Step Up Women's Network, um, and uh, you can Google it, stepup.org, uh, S-U-W-N.org is, is their website, and or you can find them on my Twitter feed probably. But uh, they mentor young women and help them uh, with uh, education and also mm -hmm. job placement. Um, they're girls who might be sort of disenfranchised on some level, and they have these amazing... Uh, meetups where they have executives from Fox, from Paramount, all, all these wonderful places, guests, uh, people in the fashion industry, lawyers, mm -hmm. uh, meet with them and they take them on as interns. Now, as I said earlier, when I go and say, yeah, I play an African-American boy, the little girls who get me are like, <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. You know, cause, but I want to I want to be a lawyer. You know, I don't, I, I, I don't do so well mentoring the kids, but yeah. I have a ton <laughs> of enthusiasm. <laughs> For for the uh, You're organization, in the older demographic. Yeah. You're more and also, effective. I'll just say really quickly, Tasia Valenza uh, got me uh, into this SOS. It's a, mm -hmm. a children's organization where I sponsor, I think, three kids uh, in Nigeria. Uh, all, all, I mean, they're that's awesome. Well, and and because twenty nine dollars a day oh. is a baller. They get a goat, water, and I, I mean... $29 a day? Or not, sorry, $29 a month. A month. I'm sorry, that's right. Yeah, okay, $29 a day man. would wow. be. Wow. Yeah. Times um, three kids. Yeah. Yeah. No, sorry, $29 a month or whatever it is for three kids. So, yeah. you know, for 90, you know... My point is, it's a it's it's a small sacrifice that yeah. makes a massive difference. Yeah. And they send pictures, and I I oh, see wow. their children, and I see them learning and how much better they're doing. Mm -hmm. and That's so cool. Um. Yeah, uh, and also Women for Women is another organization that I donate to, and I sponsor the moms. So SOS is for the kids, and mm -hmm. Women for Women, I sponsor uh, the mothers, and they they also learn how to work and, and take care of themselves and yeah. um, be self-sufficient. That's so. fantastic. You I have a beautiful it. heart. Do you know uh, that? Thank cool you. chick, baby. Thank you. You really, really yeah. are. <laughs> yeah, so well, you can find that on your website, and you can yes. find that on Twitter, so, so mm -hmm. maybe you can get involved in your in your part of the world. Yay. Absolutely. Love it. Absolutely. Vanessa, what do you think have been kind of the the keys to your success in your career? Uh, my sense of humor mm. and uh, once again the ability to not take things personally, to be curious, humble, searching, and willing to try anything. Crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, crazy. a little yeah. bit of wackiness yeah. most likely. Yeah. Um, but again, sort of leading with an open heart. And yeah. I try and be authentic in my life and vulnerable, which is so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> really, seriously. It's like, kind of beautiful, my feelings, you know, but, um, but I try and bring that same level of intimacy to my work. Mm -hmm. And um, because even though you might not hire me, I may speak to your heart on some level that at least you respect me. And yeah. at the end of the day, that's really... Uh, we're not pandering at that point. We're sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I yeah. can hear. I can hear the passion. Yeah. in uh, everything that you say. So well, you know, yeah. we're human beings, and you connect on that level. It's, Absolutely, it's, man. It's great yeah. stuff happens. It's really cool. For sure. I can see. Uh, I can see how you. Uh, oh, she knows. Do you, you know, you no, know but I see the book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she knows. Okay, pick a number between five and one hundred twenty-nine. One hundred twenty-nine specifically. Okay, yeah. very good. Seventy-eight. Okay, seventy-eight. <laughs> what is it with the 70s? It's a good time, man. Um, it's great music. Ziggy. <sighs> Ziggy played guitar. Bow, 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 bow. So good. Great song, right? Uh, um, get Harnell in here. If you could have one extra hour each day to do only one thing, what would you do in that hour? Oh. Drink Propel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, my mind went, first I say giggle. Yeah. And then, oh, then I thought, watch Tom and Jerry cartoons. And then I thought, no, you know what? I really like going to the gym and lifting weights. If I had an extra hour, because it doesn't always work in the schedule, mm -hmm. guys. Uh, that would be awesome if I always had an hour to go to the gym. Okay. I, that's my other group of friends. Yeah. The gym people. <laughs> the gym people. I like how they have the gym people. Oh, my gosh. They're hilarious. I love it. They're so funny. Thing is, 
when I first went there, I was slightly larger. And so some of them be just like, mm, girl. You know, girl? And, uh, but now, like, mommy's got guns, yeah. so they're now they're like, girl. Well, you know what? I yeah. always say you can yeah. drop and do push ups as long as you have body weight, you've got a little. There you, you go. Know, there yeah. You go. Um, but uh, they they crack me up. Yeah, when they found out that my mom is Joan Van Ark, she was mm -hmm. on Knott's Landing and uh, yeah. Dallas, suddenly I went from stranger to best friend. Wow. And it's just so funny how the weirdest things, like, I, w I did HGTV promos and uh, I was at uh, Promax and, you know, talking about this and that. And then one guy, you do HGTV? You do HGTV? Oh, I love HGTV. I love me some HGTV. And then suddenly I was Lord King God of home and garden yeah. television. Yeah, yeah. And he just, and I mean, I do nothing against it. I love me some HGTV too, but who would have known that would have been the gateway to this the man. The gateway yeah. to this man. Yeah. yeah. But you, so, you mentioned your mom. Yes. Lovely Joe Manor. Mm-hmm. Is it true that in the 70s she did the voice of Spider Woman yes. and here you are on the Spectacular Spider Man? That's kind yes. of a cool like I know, genetic that is cool. connection, right? That is yeah, cool. it really That's is. That's really cool. Yeah, she she used to do a ton of voiceover, and back in the day she was the voice of Estee Lauder. Mm -hmm. And I remember she would have to fly to New York to do all the voiceover sessions. Wow. In addition to, I, I guess she was on. Um, wow, could you imagine? Rockefeller she was working so much. Yeah, yeah. She she was you know doing the Love Boat and all these other. Oh man, Hervé Villachez. I never got to meet Hervé Villachez. Oh. Oh. Chuck did. Boss. I did. Did you? Mm -hmm. Gosh. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so one hell of a story. <laughs> yeah. Time's um, an after hour story. Yeah, yeah I'll have um, to hear that. <laughs> um, I'll but, tell uh, you over dinner. Yeah. Oh, you'll, good. You'll I can't out. wait. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, but so she she has she's also at my voiceover agency too. Yeah, so it's wonderful. Yeah, so it's cool. wonderful. Well, we loved having you. Absolutely. I'm glad thank it's you. Worked thank out. you. Thank so you so much. We can't this wait is to awesome. see what's coming for you. And you have such a beautiful heart and such a you know wonderful body of work. But you're just a great person. Oh, and God bless. I appreciate so that. We're so glad to have thank you, you here, and you're always welcome. It's nice Absolutely. to be. It's nice to be seen. You know, like when you come with good intentions yeah. to have yeah. someone receive it. It's, yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. You've got yeah. good intentions and great pants. Absolutely. God bless. And I'll tell you what, you made a lot of people. The reason why we have this show is because there's people in other countries ah. that don't have access to what we have on a day-to-day yeah. -day basis. Wow. And so there are people in Africa right now that just got some of the stuff that you said, and they're probably crying right now because they're like, mm. oh, my God. They yeah. could never get that. Wow. Um, cool. So yeah. we love getting people buzzed yeah. with the stuff that you have. Right on. With. Excellent. Well, Absolutely. Well, I wish you, you all the best. Good luck. Get yeah, down. have fun. Got fun. Find your love. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy, and I had an amazing time. You want to tune in? Buckle up. It's a wild ride. Well, that concludes our episodes with Vanessa Marshall. Please join us next week because we're going to have a brand new show for you. And guess what? You're going to love it. Yes, you are. And find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at Neo Buzz Weekly. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.